Hi everybody, this is Barry Schwartz and this is Search Buzz Video Recap. Again, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the news we covered over the past week at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com. Today again is Friday, August 24th and uh, the first thing we have to talk about today is the Google Panda 3.9.1 update. Uh, Google pushed out a refresh, they said on, on uh, Monday. Um, I saw some conversations of a possible update on Friday, last Friday, which I posted about last Friday. Uh, but Google says there was some type of update uh, a Panda refresh which affected less than 1% of all search queries um, in the English, English Google search results as of last Monday. Um, specifically, um, I did see some people who actually did recover from it and they shared some analytics with me. I have a, a screenshot in the post. But again, this is a threat fa uh, Panda 3.9.1 update on August 20th. Um, before that, there was a 3.9 update on July 24th. And I guess we have to keep adding point things in order, until they come out with a big panda update, which I don't think they might do. I think they might just not do the big updates anymore. In any event, uh, we are still waiting for the big penguin update. I guess we'll see what happens then. Another big thing that happened this week is that Google says they're actually going to show seven results when they think it's relevant, um, not showing ten anymore. Google has always showed by default ten search results. Sometimes they showed more um, when it comes to list uh, showing other um, showing other um, universal search results like videos and maps and stuff, but Google's now showing seven results, just organic results. So if you do a search for any like thing that would return site links, like search engine roundtable, search engine land, Ted Drews, I was in St. Louis last week. If you search for those things and it has site links, Google will show only 10 blue links in the search results. Um, search engine land has a comment saying Google's basically continuing to work out the best ways to show multiple results for a single uh, site when it's clear that users are interested in that specific site. So now they're just trying to show a limited set of results. Um, but it, it, this, these things change over time and it's hard to say if, it's, if, that's, if, that, if that's actually a good search user experience or not. To show less results versus more results and that's uh, you know, way to be seen. Of course that drove a lot of controversy around Google and what they're doing. Um, also, Google has added a new uh, Webmaster Tools notification. Uh, basically, it's not a new one because they actually had this feature back in uh, May of this year. And they're basically notifying of major traffic changes in, in your URL. So if you have a major drop or increase in your URLs um, in terms of traffic and impressions, Google will send that alert calling it, saying a big traffic change for top URL. Before, in May, when they started doing this, they didn't say why. They didn't say what happened. Now they're actually saying, hey, you might want to go ahead and check this is, might be the reason, because the search queries have changed, uh, because maybe there's a bug in your site. So now they're actually saying, um, they're giving more context behind why a big your, your, uh, your URL might have increased or decreased in terms of set search traffic. Uh, Microsoft search pattern um, named System and Method for Ranking Search Results Using Click Distance has a nice um, talk about why it's important for you to actually go ahead and have your links on, um, to their most important content as high up, and up on the structure of your site uh, as opposed to deeper in the site. So obviously, one of the ma main things SEOs do is try to make sure that their content is linked to from their homepage, um, at least the most, the most important content is linked to their homepage. And if not, they try to diversify the, home, the site architecture in order to try to get Google to give the most uh, link authority and link pa uh, page rank towards their most important pages that they want to rank. Um, that's a common thing, but now there's a patent from Microsoft on it um, talking about how important it is um, and it's pretty interesting to read, so definitely take a look at that on August 20th at seroundtable.com. The next patent I have to talk about is Google Patent. Google has a patent which seems to be about two uh, uh, things. One is, uh, one is, it's basically it's named the Google Rank, I'm sorry, it's, it's named, the patents are called Ranking Documents, and it's specifically about um, two things. One is uh, maybe about the Penguin update. It talks a lot about things that are related to Penguin. Two is it talks about how maybe Google could trick SEOs, not necessarily saying in that context, but trick SEOs into uh, changing the ranking based on no logical reason at all. So they might change the rank, their search results just to confuse SEOs and spammers, or SE, not SEOs per se, but spammers, um, from thinking they actually fool the algorithm and by fooling that person. Uh, people do that in the real world, they'll go ahead and uh, fake, fake people out in that way, um, but it, it seems to have that implication in the actual um, patent document. If you want to read it, it's on August 20th at SEOroundtable.com. We have links to it, plus Bill Slosky over at SEO um, by the Sea has a great write-up on it, and as well we link to the Webmaster World thread. Um, it's pretty interesting to see stuff like that. Google's Matt Cott said, maybe he said, I'm not 100% sure, and in comments I asked him specifically about this. He basically 
implied that Penguin is mostly about links. Now, you and I, most of the SEOs out there feel that Penguin is mostly about links. Google has never confirmed that. They said links is one component of it, uh, but they never confirmed it's mostly about it. And uh, Matt Cotts on Twitter said, hey, Josh, who commented at our site in regards to something else last week, which had 400 plus comments yelling at me or yelling at Google, uh, basically saying, Josh, I saw your comment in Barry's post. Certainly links are primary area to monitor. Been true all year, expected to continue. Now, he didn't say Penguin specifically, but he was replying to a specific Penguin question. Um, again, it's hard to say for sure. Google's not always 100% clear about what they're talking about. And uh, we do our best to translate that for you guys. Ad Center, Microsoft has added a feature to Ad Center allowing ad rotation. Now you can add rotate based off of optimized for clicks versus rotate ads more evenly. Google had had this feature for a while. They actually went ahead and removed the feature like that and they added it back after a lot of controversy around it. Uh, but it's good to see Microsoft adopting a feature like that. Google AdSense has updated their user interface design. They're making it more Google-esque. Um, and what that means is that the help menus on the top right, the bars are much clearer and stuff like that. The major issue um, from what I see is that um, it doesn't work on iOS. A lot of people are complaining that it doesn't work on iOS. It works fine on Android, but it does not work on iOS. Facebook has added officially the ability to um, create search ads. Um, now, if you do a search in Facebook for games or other keywords, um, Facebook will show sponsored results at the top of that search uh, box, and, uh, and the advertiser will pay on a cost per click basis. The issue is that advertisers are not paying on a keyword, they're not matching on keyword phrases, they're actually matching more on entities such as um, you know, pages, places. Um, apps and stuff like that, but not specifically buying keywords. So it's an interesting way to doing keyword ads based off of that. It's more contextual based keyword ads, uh, but we'll see how it works for Facebook. It might be uh, the perfect thing. Google has added a feature. Now when you see, back in the day when you wanted to go ahead and update, update your search preferences on Google, you went to edit preferences, you hit save, and it only saved those preferences specifically to that browser. Now if you go ahead and update your, your Google uh, preferences, it will save it to your Google account. So if you go to Firefox, Chrome, use a different laptop or whatever, it will save it across all your different uh, Google properties. Now it doesn't apply to Google Mobile, because Google Mobile specifically uh, Google Mobile specifically is a different user interface, so if you do save your Google Mobile preferences, it will save that across all mobile devices, but it's specific to desktop versus uh, mobile, and so you know um, it will keep that across all, all devices, all uh, experiences, as long as you log into your Google account, obviously. And finally, um, uh, SEO Mods came out with a big SEO survey. Um, there's a lot of good takeaways here, but you can take a look at it. We have the link to SEO Mods' survey on August 21st. They asked 53 different questions. They had almost 7,000 or 6,500 respondents. Um, SEOs, a lot of different takeaways on terms of like how much money they're making and stuff like that, top tools they use, how much money they're making and stuff like that. So you might want to take a look at that poll if you are in the SEO industry and you're interested in that. In any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz. Today is Friday, August 24th. And this is the news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com. Everyone have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next. Bye.